this video we're going to be looking at the factor theorem. Now to get into this we're going to first look at a quadratic, something you're used to doing. So we've got quadratic here and it's equal to zero and you should have no problems factorizing it and solving it. So to factorize you'll first look at this minus 15 and you just think of two numbers which multiply together to make the number in the middle, minus 2. And minus 5 and plus 3 sounds good. Then of course you factorize it. And from this step we simply say the solutions. Minus 3 and 5. Something you've been doing a lot, especially in your GCSEs. And you should be good at it by now. Okay, so what do these solutions mean? For example, let's look at x equals 5. If you put it back into the equation, what should happen? Of course it should equal to 0 because it's a solution for the equation. It's numbers which work in the equation and equate to whatever it's meant to equate to. For example here, it's meant to equate to 0 if the solutions are correct. And with 5 it did. Now I am building up to something, so don't worry. So these solutions, we need to call them roots. They are the roots of the equations. And some of you probably already call them that. So our roots were minus 3 and plus 5. And these are factors. x plus 3 is a factor and x minus 5 is a factor. So you need to remember that also. And also pay attention to the relationship between the roots and the factors. Of course, if minus 3 was a root, we said x plus 3 was a factor. Actually, we said it the other way around. But the same thing. And if x minus 5 was a factor, then x equals 5 is a solution or a root. Of course, we can say it the other way. If 5 is a root, then x minus 5 is a factor. So generally, if you've got a function, any function, if you put a number in as x, let's say that number is a, and it equals out as 0, it means a is a root of that equation. Which means, what is a factor? Well, x minus a is a factor. And this is called the factor theorem. So here I've got another quadratic. And of course we can solve it using the GCSE method and get the roots and the factors. Here I've factorised it, wasn't too difficult, hopefully you got something the same. And these would be the factors. x plus 2 is a factor and x minus 1 is a factor. Which means our roots are minus 2 and plus 1. Now what we want to do is find the factors and the roots but not use this method. We're going to use the factor theorem to do it. Reason being is with cubics and quartics, it's not easy to factorize as you've done with quadratics. So we need to have other methods in order to find the factors and find the roots. So let's look at the same quadratic, but this time we'll solve it using the factor theorem. And what we do with the factor theorem is not very nice, by the way, is we just try out some values as x. So let's put x in as 1. So replacing all the x's with 1, which will be 1 squared plus 1 minus 2. And that gives you 0. So what does that mean? That means that 1 was a root. And of course, that means x minus 1 was a factor. Next, we try out some more values because we know there's another factor. So let's now try minus 1. So replace all the x's with minus 1. And we get minus 2, so we weren't that lucky this time. Minus 1 is not a root. Let's try 2 now. Replace all the x values with 2. And again, we've not been lucky. It's not equal to 0. That means 2 is not a root. What should we try next? Well, let's try minus 2 now. And then we'll try 3, minus 3, 4, minus 4, until we get another root and a factor. So let's replace all the x values with minus 2. And this time it gave us 0. Wonderful. So minus 2 is a root. And of course, if minus 2 is a root, what's a factor? It means x plus 2 is a factor. You could say x minus minus 2, but of course that is x plus 2. And we've got our two factors. So it wasn't really a nice way to work out the factors of this quadratic, because the other GCSE method was much quicker. 
However, with polynomials with higher orders, we prefer using this method because you can't factorize them as easy as you can with quadratics. Finally, let's look at a non-quadratic and try the factor theorem. So we put one into it and we didn't get zero. We got four, which means one is not a root. So let's just continue. Let's try minus one now. Oh, brilliant. With minus one, we put it in and we did get zero. And what does that mean? It means minus one is a root, of course. But what is a factor? And hopefully you said x plus one is a factor. And we're dealing with a cubic. So if we did fully factorize it, it's possible that it can go into three brackets. So hopefully there's two more factors. So let's continue. So we've tried one and minus one. Let's now try two. And if you want to try it at any point, just keep pausing the video and put it in yourself. And two did give us zero, which means two is a root and x minus two is a factor. So we've got two brackets. We've got two brackets, there must be a third one. So let's carry on. And here we've tried minus two, and we weren't so lucky, it's not a root. Next we've tried three, and it did come out as zero when we put x in as three. So that means three is a root. So three is a root, and of course it means x minus three is a factor. So you're probably not enjoying this method because it feels a little bit like trial and error. But if you learn how to do polynomial division, then once you've found one factor, to get the other two factors is very easy. We'll have a look at that on my video on polynomial division. So let's try on one more cubic function. Okay, of course, we always start with putting in x in as one. And we've got lucky straight away. One is a root which means x minus one is a factor. And putting in minus one, we don't get a root. Next, let's try two. Again, two was not a root. Let's next try minus two. And minus two was also no good. Minus two is not a root. Now, don't give up hope yet. I'm sure we're going to get a root. Let's try three next. Brilliant, we've got a root. Three is a root which means x minus three is a factor. And minus three also gave us zero, which means minus three is a root, and x plus three is a factor. So we found all the factors of this cubic function. So you could rewrite this cubic function as a triple bracket, if you'd like. Now, before I finish this video, I want you to look back at when I put x in as two, f2. Now, two was not a root because it came out as minus five. So we can clearly say two is not a root. And we can also say that x minus two must not be a factor. But this answer minus five it gave when we put x in as two does mean something. And you can use it in your division. What it means is if I take this function I've got, the cubic, and I did divide it by x minus two, which we know is not a factor, the remainder would be this minus five here. So if you were doing a division and you're dividing this polynomial by x minus two, well, you can always check if you got it right by checking if your remainder is correct. As you're dividing by x minus two, you'd put two in. And of course, x minus two is not a factor, so when you put two in, it should give you the remainder. If you look at minus one as well, when we put minus one in, it didn't come out as zero, which means x plus one is not a factor. But when we put minus one in, we got 16, which means if you got your function and divided it by x plus one, then the remainder should be 16. Just something extra for I let you know. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.